Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to see about Neisseria gonorrhea. Neisseria gonorrhea is a gram-negative diplococci. Some of the important features of this bacterium are, it produces endotoxin, it has a capsule and specialized pili. This pili allows attachment to mucosal surface. It shows antigenic variation to evade host defenses and it prevents phagocytosis. Now let us discuss the clinical features of Neisseria gonorrhea. Locally, it causes genital tract or anorectal infections. The patients can be asymptomatic. It causes urethritis and dysuria in men. Urethritis is inflammation of urethra and dysuria is pain during urination. It causes cervicitis or inflammation of cervix in women. The risk factors for development of cervicitis are menstruation and use of intrauterine contraceptive devices. Neisseria gonorrhea causes ophthalmia neonatorum or neonatal conjunctivitis in neonates born to mothers with Neisseria gonorrhea infection. The systemic features include septic arthritis which is infectious inflammation of joints. Neisseria gonorrhea is in fact the most common cause of septic arthritis in sexually active young adults. Now let us discuss the complications of Neisseria gonorrhea. In women, Neisseria gonorrhea can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease which in turn can lead to ectopic pregnancy sterility and fitz hugh curtis syndrome which is inflammation of liver capsule. Now let us discuss the pathogenesis of Neisseria gonorrhea. These bacteria survive only in humans. They attach via pili to mucosal surfaces of urethra and vagina. Neisseria gonorrhea evades IgA antibodies with IgA protease and it is endocytosed by cells which kills the ciliated cells. The inflammatory response leads to urethritis in men and cervicitis in women. In women, the infection may progress to uterus, fallopian tubes and ovaries causing pelvic inflammatory disease. This causes an increased risk for ectopic pregnancies. Further, from the fallopian tubes, bacteria may spill into peritoneal cavity leading to peritonitis and it may infect liver capsule causing fitz hugh curtis syndrome. Neisseria gonorrhea can invade submucosa and enter bloodstream. They may collect in synovial fluid leading to septic arthritis. In neonates, Neisseria gonorrhea inoculates conjunctiva during passage through birth canal leading to ophthalmia neonatorum which increases the risk for blindness. Now let us discuss the diagnosis of Neisseria gonorrhea. Microscopy shows gram negative diplococci within neutrophils as you can see in this picture. Neisseria gonorrhea metabolizes only glucose and not maltose. This picture shows Neisseria gonorrhea oxidizing glucose. In case of Neisseria meningitis, it oxidizes both glucose and maltose. A mnemonic to remember this is G for gonorrhea and G for glucose, whereas M for meningitis and M for maltose. Neisseria gonorrhea selectively grows on Thayer Martin media. As you can see in this picture, in Thayer Martin medium, only Neisseria grows. Now, let us discuss the treatment of Neisseria gonorrhea. We have to prescribe ceftriaxone. It is important to remember that whenever a woman presents with gonorrhea, we should also prescribe doxycycline for probable concurrent chlamydia infection. In case of neonates, we have to give prophylactic erythromycin eye drops. Vaccine development for Neisseria gonorrhea is difficult because of pili antigen variation. This antigenic variation prevents immunity allowing recurrent infections. Now let us discuss a clinical case to understand the features of Neisseria gonorrhea. A teenager complains of pain during sexual intercourse and irregular intermenstrual bleeding. She has also begun to experience lower abdominal pain. A pelvic exam reveals a yellow mucopurulent discharge and during the exam the cervix begins to bleed. Gram stain of the discharge reveals gram negative intracellular diplococci. The teenager reports that she has been sexually active with several partners over the last year. One of her partners, a male, comes to the same clinic complaining of dysuria and profuse yellow urethral discharge. If you notice, in this case, in case of female, it has caused cervicitis and in case of male, it has caused urethritis and dysuria. Also, microscopy shows gram-negative intracellular diplococci. So, this case shows all the features of Neisseria gonorrhea. If you like my videos, kindly subscribe. Your subscription will encourage me to make more videos. Thank you.